Today I want to share with you how to paint a cherry blossom with a few simple steps easily so you can keep a little piece of spring season in your painting. Hi, this is Eric from Cafe Watercolor. Spring is here and we are seeing flowers blooming. Floral isn't my usual subject to paint, but in recent years, I started to like it. Not just because flowers are beautiful, but also because I find analyzing the structures of the flowers fascinating. Now, you might be thinking structure and nature doesn't seem to go together that well. But the reason we can see patterns in nature and paint them out is because of the hidden structures in the wild. So let's look at a cherry blossom flower, see how we draw first, then paint it in watercolor. Okay, so let's take a look at the cherry blossom flower by itself. Now I have a photo that's a group of cherry flowers, but we're just focusing on one or two. And to start off, we are going to try to simplify it as much as possible. Now, if we look at cherry blossom straight on, it is five petals. Now, if we want to simplify that further, we will simplify that down to a primitive, which is a pentagon because it has five angle, five points. So pentagon like that. Let me draw it just a little bit harder so you can see better. So that's a pentagon, right? Now, if we take the center, that will be the pistol of the flower. And we'll just do this. Now, this is really overly simplified. This is almost looking like a symbol. But you can see where this is going. Now, this is looking it straight on, but sometimes the flower is facing different directions. Like in the photo on the left, the left one is actually facing up a little bit. So we can use a little bit sense of perspective by doing this. So now it feels like it's facing up a little bit. And if we try to do the same thing here if we try to find like a center here and we'll do our flower petals here and here's a little bit shorter down here okay so that will be something a little bit more like the flowers facing up now to go a step further the petals are not flat like these, right? If they, if you look at it on the side, they actually curl up a little bit at the end. Now I'm going to take a look at the photos on the left and try to do a drawing for the left cherry blossom. Now that when I'm drawing the petal, I will try to be a little bit more articulated. Now I don't have to copy it one to one. It is flower after all, it's nature. It's always a little bit random and organic. But as we looking at our reference photos, we'll try to articulate that just a little bit. Okay, and one petal down here. Now I don't have to fit everything into the pentagon, okay? That's just a guide. Okay. And one petal down here, and it's a little bit flat here because it's kind of curled in. And this petal is in front of this petal, so we have to kind of be mindful when we are doing the drawing here. Okay, so this going to lead to another scene, which is overlapping with line work. Now, if I do this, if I do this line, and then this line. Now, it's all optical illusion, but your mind will think this surface is in front of this surface. So this is front, this is behind. So this is in the front, this is in the back. So this surface is in front of this surface because of the line that we established. So when we do this, OK, 
okay now it's kind of starting to look like a rope but this will be the front and behind that and behind that and behind that so this overlapping line is really important so if we move back to this you can tell that this pedal is in front of this pedal this pedal in front of this pedal and these two are kind of a butting against each other around the same but i will say this pedal is just a little bit in front of that and this top pedal is in front okay and now i'm just going to eyeball the pistols from the center of the flower kind of going up like that almost like a almost like a like a sphere okay this is a side view almost like a sphere kind of like an oval shape and they all kind of grow up like that so we try to do that so a little bit sense of perspective will always help okay so essentially that's how you do it Pretty easy, right? Instead of going straight into the detail, we find the basic 3D structures of the flowers, then apply what we see and add some articulation. If you simply try to copy it by treating it as a flat image, you can lose the structure and your painting will end up looking flat. So let's take the drawing and turn it into a watercolor painting. Before we start though, if you like my content and want more video like this one, be sure to give it a like and subscribe Ring the notification bell so you will get notified every time I put up a new video. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so let's do some paintings of the cherry blossom flower. Now I'm going to do two. The one on the left will be a value study. And then the one on the right will be the color version. I will do it side by side so you can compare. So first of all, I will do a line drawing. And I will try to practice what I have shown, which is draw a pentagon in perspective. I will be drawing two flowers just so that we can have something a little bit more interesting to look at. So the pentagon was the center and now I am drawing the flower petal. I switched to my mechanical pencil so I can make some finer lines. So try to articulate the flower petals, but you don't have to make it exactly the same as the photo. This is nature. There's no need to make it one-to-one -to, -one to the photograph. The petals on the left. Watch out for the overlapping. And then I go ahead and start to draw the flower on the right. A slightly different angle and with different shape as well. Okay, so now that we're done with the drawing, we need to think about the value. Now the background is going to be middle value because the petals are white. So in order to make those petals looking nice and bright, we need to have the background as middle value. So the petals will be popping in front of the background. Now there are some shadow areas on the petal, but they are also not that dark. So some of it will be middle value, but the flower on the bottom is actually getting a little bit more sun. So I'm just going to simplify that into light value. So I'll start off by mixing a middle value. Again, this is a value study, so I'm just using cobalt black and paint the negative space to bring out the flower petal. Now when I do this sort of negative painting, I am not giving myself the pressure that I have to paint right on the lines that I've drawn. This is not a coloring book. You will not get point deducted by painting inside or outside of the line. Just pay a little bit of attention and try to relax and paint with as few brush strokes as possible. So don't try to go very precise and use tiny little brush strokes. So here I painted the background and I can add just a little bit darker values wet onto wet so that there are some branches and stuff in the background. 
And also some part of the background, I can darken it a little bit just so that the flower petal will be a little bit brighter because of the contrast. And then I am bringing some middle value from the background to the flower. So for the shadow part on the flower petals, some of them will be the middle value. And now I want to leave a little bit of a random light for the pistol in the center of the flower. Trying to stay loose so I am not using masking fluid or trying to make it super precise. Just a little hints and suggestions. And that should be enough. And connecting all of the middle values together. Moving down to the flowers on the left. It does have a little bit of middle value in the shadow on the flower petals. So I will be painting those in. Painting the center of the flower, the pistol. So the same thing applies here. I will skip and paint around, leaving some random highlights to suggest the pistol. But the two flower petals on the top, they are actually pretty bright. So I'm not going to paint too much, leaving them nice and light. All right, so I did another set of drawing. I skipped that so you don't have to watch it again. But this time I'm going to paint the color version. So I will start with the background. So it's mostly a warm blue. So I will add some cerulean blue to the cobalt blue. Now this is the middle value, just like the value study on the left, but in color. And again, no point deducted if you paint outside or inside the line. It's way more important to have a nice consistent wash than to paint everything super precise. And here I need to make some more colors so that the background will stay nice and consistent. If you're running out of color, try to mix more color. Don't just try to add water so you can finish the wash because if you do that, the wash is not going to be consistent and it's going to end up looking too weak. And a lot of time you don't want very watery paint. You actually want some consistency to it. So here I add some carmine wet on to wet because there's some flowers in the back and just to make it a little bit more interesting. I know most of the flowers in the back are white as well, but just a little bit of color interest. And now I'm mixing a color for the middle value on the flower petals. They are a little bit more neutral towards warm color. So I will be mixing a warm color with cobalt blue, burnt umber, and add a little bit of orange just to make it looking warmer. And because I start painting the flower petal before the background is completely dry, some of the blue color will seep in. But I think that is fine. Have a little bit of color bleeding is what makes watercolor interesting and beautiful. So just like the value study, I will paint around leaving some random highlight for the pistol in the center of the flower, keeping it nice and loose, connect the shape. And I want to add a little bit of the yellow color for the center of the flower, the color of the pistols, I want to do that before it is completely dry. So we got some warmer, more yellowish color bleeding through that will make this color a little bit more interesting. And here I use a damp brush to soften the edge on the left. So we got a little bit of the softer transition. So they are not all hard edges. 
continue down to the flowers on the left. So the same thing, I'm going to paint some of the middle value, the shadow part of the petals. Then also paint some yellow in the center and have the shape connect together and let the color blend naturally. And again, this is a very loose painting, so I am not going to do too much wet on to wet, trying to make the process simple. And it's also very easy once you're starting to look closer at the photo because there's so many details in there. So just glance at the photo and try to paint what you think the most important part is. And just like the value study, I need to paint something just a little bit lighter, not as dark as the middle value on the top two petals. They are getting a little bit more light. So I just need a tiny little bit of value to suggest the structure, the texture of the petal, and also hint the pistols in the center of the flower. Use the tip of my brush, get a little bit details in. Okay, so here's a side-by-side -side comparison between the value study and the color. They both have their first wash in, which is the middle value. And now while I'm waiting for the color version to dry, the value study is dry enough. I can go back and paint the dark value. And there's not going to be that much dark value in it. We just need to paint the darker value in a few spots to finish the painting. Start with the flower on the top. There's some occluded shadow where all the petals converge into the center. And a few quick dots for the top of the pistols. And I am not counting how many pistols and how many tips I need to paint. That's not the point of this painting. In here, I paint some dark in the background. There are some dark branches and stuff. But mostly, I just want the flower petals to pop out a little bit more. So just some quick dark in the background to create that contrast. So the same thing for the flower on the left, some dark value for the occluded area, and also a few dots for the tips of the pistols. And that's about it. Like I said, you don't really need a lot to make this painting feels more complete. So let's come back to the color version and start to paint our darks. Now we have color to think about also. So while we're mixing the dark values, think about the color as well. The colors are very warm, so I will be adding some warm, more saturated colors. It does need to be pretty dark though, so I added some ultramarine blue, burnt umber just to make a dark value. And with that, I start to paint the occluded shadow area for the flower on the left. The wash is not completely dry, so there's still a little bit of bleeding, but that's okay. And since we're using the same color for the flowers on the top as well. So I'll just go ahead and paint that and also the branch in the background. Now normally I might use wet onto wet for the branch in the background just to separate it a little bit more. But in this case it's okay since the background is already dry. And I'm adding some Henson yellow deep, some orange, and start to add those into the painting. So the pistol of the flower, the bottom of it is quite dark. Dark, but also have very saturated colors. So when you have doubt, don't know how bright or how dark some color should be, squint your eyes a little bit and see how that compare with the highlight, which is the light on the white petals.
moving on to the flowers on the top same thing i'm just using the same color painting some tip of the pistols and adding some more warm color in the center and i do want to preserve some highlight so don't paint over everything bit more yellow And now the painting is finished. It's a very rough painting, but you get the point. And now I'm going to wait for the paint to dry and I'll erase some of the pencil lines so it'll look cleaner. Okay, the pencil lines are mostly gone and we left with a very clean looking painting. Now some of the edges, some of the borders between the petals are gone, but in the context of a loose painting this actually looks pretty nice I like how lost and found those edges are feeling so as long as you understand the structure of the flower and you apply them in your painting it will usually work out you just have to believe yourself so from a very simple pentagon a very simple primitive to a painting I hope this step-by-step -step demo is helpful for you so I hope you enjoyed this simple demo. Now for the bonus, I will share a painting I did for my Patreon group. I do weekly demo for my Patreon group and with a cost of a cup of coffee, you get weekly unedited recorded demos throughout the months. The one I'm going to show you is a sped up version of the demo, otherwise this video will be more than an hour long. But if you're interested, definitely check it out. I will put the link down below and you will be able to access over 60 recorded demos from the past. Okay, that's the end of my self-promotion. Let's take a look at the painting process together. Okay, so let's take a look at this bonus demo. The process of the line drawing is pretty much the same, but in this case, we have multiple flowers. So the first thing I want to do is actually arrange the flower so it creates a pleasing composition. Now, when I took this photo, I do have a certain composition in mind, but I still need to rearrange a few things in my own painting. Now, as you can see, the way I start to draw this cherry blossoms are pretty much the same way as I showed you a little bit earlier. Start with a pentagon and draw out the petals. This cherry blossom is different than the one that I shown earlier. The petals are a little bit more separated, but the basic concept is the same. Get the big shape down and then refine it further while observing the reference photo and add a little bit more articulation to the line drawing. Now, I am not going to give all of the flowers the same amount of care because I want to just focus on a few flowers and the rest of it are pretty much backgrounds and secondary elements. So I do the line drawings decided to include the branch underneath just so we can have a little bit more balanced composition. I took this photo in the local library so it was a few weeks ago where the flowers are blooming very beautiful but yesterday when I visit there the flowers are already gone so they don't really bloom for a long time. So that makes this painting a little bit more special because I get to capture their full blooms. Now I start the first wash. So the cherry blossoms here have a little bit of pink colors on them. So what I did is I pre-wet the surface and I just paint those colors in wet on too wet. And those color will bloom they will spread out very naturally and because these are just the color of the light i don't need to really worry about trying to create solid shapes so mostly just going to do some wet onto wet get some light colors in and I will be able to refine those shapes when I am painting the background color. So pre-wet a little bit more, splatter some pink color on them. 
Just try to have a little bit of fun. So here I mix my blue color for the background. So they are a little bit darker than the first wash. And I'm using a big brush to do that because I need to have a rather large coverage. So when you're painting bigger area, use a bigger brush. That will make things easier. Now I'm closing in and start to paint around the flowers. I want to preserve the light of those flowers. I also leave out some white spaces because I want to have some petals floating in the sky. So I leave some random lights here and there. Some wet onto wet, get some flowers in the background. They are soft and blurry. So here I need to slow down a little bit and articulate the edges of the flowers. I need to work quick because I want a nice consistent wash for the background. So that's why when I say don't try to paint super precise, this is not a coloring book. So it's far more important to have a nice consistent wash than painting your washes right on the line that you drew. Adding some more colors in the background so that you can kind of feel there are some flowers in the background. They're kind of out of focus, just like the camera bokeh. And now the background is done. I use a paper towel to lift a little bit of paint some part I want to be a little bit lighter. So you can do that before it is completely dry. Adding some more wet onto wet while I can. So now the background is done. I am starting to work on the flower. So I make something a little bit darker, slightly darker than the middle value and start from the pistol of the flowers. And because there is that pink color, purple color spreading out very naturally from the center outward to the flower petals. So I want to introduce a little bit of that color transition. And also there are some flowers in the back that are much darker because they are in the cast shadow that's casted by other flowers and tree and branches and stuff. So I painted some darker shapes in the background and I have that connect to other flowers. So when you have multiple flowers like these, treat them as a big group. You don't have to paint out every single one of the flower. Treat it as a whole picture. Some flowers will be a little bit more clear. Some flowers will be a little bit more loose or even abstract. But you only need a few flowers that's more defined and the rest of the painting will work itself out. To me, if you paint every single flower with the same amount of details, they're going to look just the same and the painting will end up looking flat. We want some focus and the rest of it are just there to support. So I remove a little bit of masking fluid that I applied in the beginning for the pistol. Didn't really work all that well, so I still need to paint around it, trying to make the shape finer. But here now I am adding a little bit darker values. For the pistols and some other part of the flowers. And again, some part of the flowers are going to be a little bit more abstract. They're just values and colors. Because I'm painting a group of flowers rather than just one. So I will treat them as a group. So here, adding some more dark around what I consider the main flower. So now I'm just creating visual languages 
So we have the light flower petals, couple of them together. And if I add the dark red pistol areas in the center, it's going to look like a cherry blossom flower. So it's not really that difficult, again, as long as you know the basic structure of the flowers. And because we're painting nature, you don't have to make everything super precise. So it's actually quite fun to paint them. I decided to add a flower bud that's not bloomed yet. It is in the photo, but I thought it would be interesting to add this in so that it looks a little bit more interesting. And now I'm mixing a very dark value and paint that branch behind the flowers. This dark branch serves as a connector between most of the flowers. So this will guide viewers' eyes across the whole painting. And it also makes some of the flower petals brighter and sharper. Again, keep those shapes very nice and loose, but pay attention to the thick and thin of this shape. Some very thin branches, some thicker ones. And now I'm starting to pre-wet some of the background and paint some tree branches. And when they hit the wet area, they are going to bloom out into a more blurry, soft tree branches in the distance. And I also feel like the painting needs a little bit more contrast for the flowers to stand out a little bit more. So I decided to do a glaze for the background, especially in the center where some of the flowers need to be a little bit brighter and a little bit more clear. So I blow the painting dry and do a glaze. Now I'm glazing the background, so that means I need to paint around the flowers. So once again, be mindful of the shape of the flowers. But also don't try to spend too much time and let the wash dry. It is especially important for glazing because you don't want a messy glaze that's going to ruin the painting. So as you can see, after I darken the background, the flowers are much more clear and they are separated from the background. And I soften the edges with clean water so that it almost feels like a vignette. Paint some more branches in the wet area. And again, they will be softened because you paint that wet onto wet. So that just pushes the depths a little bit more while making the background a little bit more interesting. I add some more dark branches just so that I feel the composition needs it. And we are finished. A very loose and simple cherry blossom painting captured a little bit of spring on my paper. I hope you enjoyed today's demo. Spring is here and I hope we can all enjoy it to the fullest. And a good way to do that is to paint. That's it for today. I hope you have a wonderful day wherever you are. I'm Eric from Cafe Watercolor. See you next time.